Hi guys, welcome to regulation of transcription and translation. So you need to be able to explain how each student affects gene transcription, state what a small interfering RNA is, and explain how it affects gene expression. So in terms of the specification, we are looking at the eukaryotic cell, we're looking at the estrogen, and we'll, we'll be looking at the interfering RNA. So first, a quick recap on the uh, aspects from year one, section uh, section four. So you need to be able to, ex to understand what is the relationship between DNA, chromosomes, and protein synthesis. So DNA, a double helix, okay, binds with histones, proteins, make a more co uh, condensed form of DNA called chromatin, and the most condensed form of the DNA, it's called a chromosome. So we were looking at the process uh, of the regulation of transcription and translation. So to do so, you need to know what is a gene. So a gene is a, a base sequence of DNA that codes for amino acid sequence of a polypeptide, but also a functional RNA. So the uh, the pattern from DNA to protein, of course, follows as DNA, a section of DNA, a gene will be uh, will be affecting the uh, sequence of mRNA, tRNA that will then bring uh, amino acids, which will be joined uh, by peptide bonds to form a protein. So you need to know this relationship between DNA and the protein. So uh, what are the transcription factors? So, transc of course, the gene is not going to express itself on its own. So, it needs a little helpers, and uh, the transcription factors are uh, regulate proteins. So, they are here to uh, to start the process of transcription. So, uh, what do they do? Okay, so we got the transcription factor, which is a complex uh, with the receptor attached, and the binding and transcription factor has a binding site on it. So uh, on the receptor, we've got a hormone binding site. So how they actually work? Okay, so they can work in 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 two ways. So they can work in the way to express the gene, so the transcription can take place, and you, we will get a protein. But they can also uh, inhibit the gene expression, so there won't be any trans, uh, transcription, and we won't get any protein. So let's have a look how it could possibly happen. So. One of the actions that we will be looking at, it's a common action. So something that you are already familiar with, it's a second messenger that you've learned about in a section six. So have a quick look through this. And uh, the new stuff for today, it's the uh, transcription and translation regulation by the estrogen. Estrogen, it's a lipid soluble hormone, so it's really important. So we've got two types of the hormone uh, in, uh, mentioned here. Second messenger, so uh, that was to do with the regulation of the blood glucose concentration. That was a protein hormone. Here, estrogen, it's a lipid soluble hormone which will act directly. Okay, so it won't act uh, through the second messenger. It will act directly on the gene expression. So. Have a look how uh, how it works. So the estrogen can switch the gene on, so the transcription can take place. So looking at the structure of the uh, of the transcription factors, the estrogen can bind to the binding site of the uh, DNA, and it can change its shape. Doing so, it's going to uh, uh, to uh, get from the cytoplasm, sorry, so that was a cytoplasm, okay, through the nuclear pores to the uh, to the nucleus where we will find DNA, okay, so it's going to go bind to the DNA and start the process of transcription. So how does it work? We did say that estrogen is a lipid soluble, 
so can easily diffuse through the uh, through the uh, cell surface membrane through the pi layer and it can attach to the receptor by attaching to the receptor what we've seen on our quick animation we know that this transcription factor can change the shape okay so doing so we're changing the shape so the uh, activated uh, complex the transcription factor can now uh, can now uh, get to the nucleus through the nuclear pores and bind to the DNA. So when it binds uh, through the, by the binding signs on the transcription factor, the process of transcription, so the production of mRNA, can take place. So how does it take place? Let's quickly uh, get yourself a pen and paper to summarize this. So the gene that codes for the protein that we are interested in is stimulated by a specific transcription factor. So for transcription to take place, we need to switch the gene on. Okay, so this could be done by transcription of factors that can move from the cytoplasm to the nucleus. Each of them has a binding site which is specific to that gene of interest once they bind together, the transcription can take place. We will get mRNA, which then will be translated into a polypeptide. So this is the uh, process of switching the gene on. But we also could switch the gene off. So in which situation this complex, it's not going to work well. So it's not going to start the protein synthesis because the site on the transcriptional factor that binds to DNA, so that one here, as you can see, it's not active. So that inhibitor molecule, it's still in there, so uh, protein synthesis cannot take place. So that was one of the aspects using the estrogen. And now we will be looking at the process of siRNA, so interfere, small interfere RNA. So how this can then prevent the gene expression. So we're going to use the diagram from your books and we will have a look how translation can, take, uh, can be inhibited. So transcription was the production of mRNA, translation is then the production of, uh, of the polypeptide. So as we can see here, we're starting with a double-stranded RNA, uh, which will be then cut into small interfering RNA using enzyme 1. So once it's cut, as we can see, into smaller pieces, the uh, enzyme 2 will combine to this, and, uh, and it's going to... Uh, cut it even further into the single-stranded siRNA. So uh, the complementary base pairs between the uh, single-stranded uh, rRNA are going to now be made between your mRNA, the mRNA uh, of interest that we wanted to use to produce the specific protein. Once they bind to it, the enzyme 2 that we've used here to make a single stranded uh, siRNA is going to come along and it's going to chop our own mRNA of our interest. So if mRNA of our interest is not as it should be, so it's not the original coding for the protein of our interest, of course, we're not going to get a process of translation uh, in the right manner so translation is not taking place and we're not getting our protein. So that shows you how uh, siRNA inhibits the translation of mRNA. So how can we use the uh, uh, siRNA? We could use it to identify the role of the genes in biological pathway. By using it, we could block certain genes so we can observe the effects of those being turned on or off. So if we're blocking them, they will be turned off. And some uh, diseases are genetic and are caused by expression of a certain genes. So if we could block it by siRNA, it could be possible to prevent that specific disease.
Right, so that's everything for the uh, process of regulation of transcription.